Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, a couple of French Chardonnays today. Uh, one is a Burgundy, one isn't a Burgundy. Uh, which shall I start with? Uh, lowest alcohol is the Burgundy. Um, lower alcohol, I should say. Uh, so this is Louis Latour's uh, Puy say uh, 2015, weighing in at 13%. Let's give this a whirl. Gentle, generous pear, slight nuttiness. Um, maybe a hint of oak and um, it doesn't smell like it's going to be amazingly complex. 2015 was a warm year for Burgundy, and um, uh, we say is on that southern end of Burgundy, so the warmest bit, and um, it may be that they didn't have enough uh, tang and freshness to uh, uh, give something with lots of vibrancy of fruit, but um, have they still made a good wine? Let's have a see. Well, it's not on the crisp side of Burgundy. Um, it's on the rounded, rich, uh, full hearty end of, um, of white burgundy. One of those wines that uh, for people who who, who who are just getting into burgundy and have been trained on slightly fleshier New World Chardonnays, that's the sort of thing that you want to to give them to ease them into their e ease them into learning more about it. It's it's okay. Um, I would like the vibrancy that you get in a a, a fresher vintage. Uh, it just the, the finish just seems a little bit um, not coarse or anything, but just um, just Nice, fat and fleshy, and um, but uh, not uh, sprightly and bouncy and vibrant. And let's see whether the other one is uh, sprightly, bouncy and vibrant. Chardonnay, Le Village, Domaine de la Métairie d'Alon, uh, 2016, made by a company called Abbots and Deloney. And, um, uh, well, it's weird because there's something on the back, it says uh, blah, 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 uh, vineyards around the village of Magri in the mountains dominating Limoux. Uh, but it's not a Limu appellation, it's a pay dock. Uh, not sure why that is. Uh, 2016, weighing in at 13.5 alcohol. Let's see what this is like. So as a year younger, um, two things I noticed. One of them is uh, it feels like the fruit is slightly tang going to be slightly tangier and fresher. The other is that the oak imprint is a little bit stronger. So the first aspect I like. Second aspect I'm not so sure about. There's a slightly... Um, confected, almost sawdusty. No, I don't know. That's maybe that's a bit unfair on it. Uh, but it, it, I can taste the wine making rather than uh, where it's come from. Yeah, the oak is um, slightly front and centre at the moment. Fruit behind. A um, little bit of cashew. It's it's funny that it's like a toned down version, fruit wise, of the previous one. A little bit more zip and zest. But that uh, oak imprint is just a little bit too strong. Um, it's it's okay. Both of them are okay. They're the sort of wines that I'd finish a glass, but I'm not quite sure uh, whether if I it came to a second glass wine, uh, whether I'd be proffering my glass uh, for a, a refill or looking for something else. Uh, but this one here, um, I only I've only just opened it, and it may be that with time that uh, that oak edge uh, just uh, calms down a little. So I'll keep my eye, our eye on it and I will report back. See you soon. Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have two pooies. Pooey, pooey, oh pooey, pooey. Oh baby, we gotta go. I won't do any more singing. Uh, it, there were worse tunes I could have sung, but uh, no, I've got two. I found myself with uh, uh, two 2015 uh, wines from uh, the Maconnet, both made by Louis Latour. And I did a video featuring the Puy Fuisse yesterday, and I suddenly realised, hang on, I've got another bottle of, uh, uh, of uh, Puy, but not Puy Fuisse, uh, Puy Vanzel. Um, they are both uh, from this warm 20, uh, 2015 vintage where uh, some people are saying, is it a bit warm for Chardonnay? Uh, certainly when I was trying the Puy Fuisse yesterday, um, it was. Um, it, it felt like it needs to do a little bit of opening up, and so I thought I'd, I'd open the Puy Vanzel. So I opened that yesterday, and I thought oh, that it was. It was almost hard to tell them apart. So what I'm going to do is try them side by side now and see what, if anything, um, what the difference they, they make side by side, and also what having been open. Uh, what time are we now? It's about uh, coming up for four o'clock and they would have been opened about like six o'clock yesterday. So coming up for a, a day open, but they've spent the night in the fridge. They've come out of the fridge about uh, uh, an hour or so ago. So anyway, start with the Puy Vanzel. Uh, give this a whirl. What seems to happen um, is that um, the first time I, first time I, I, I tried this, it, uh, it, you could taste 
lots and lots of power. So it was uh, rich, creamy, much like the Puy Fuise was, uh, but not so much in, in the fruit uh, department. But um, uh, having been open for a day, uh, you're getting uh, some of this um, melon, pineapple, quite exotic, fleshy fruit coming out. And uh, sorry, I'm, I'm mouth watering here. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it feels like um, it's, uh, it's all the better of having been open a day. And it's got this rich, round flavour. You still feel that weight, that power, that texture, that creamy, uh, almost cashew-like nuttiness. Uh, but then there's this fruit, and I miss the freshness, maybe of a uh, uh, of a very fine vintage. But um, it's um, it's more satisfying than it was yesterday. What about the Puy Fuise? I mean, they're about the same price. This one, twenty-three pounds compared with uh, twenty-five pounds, so not much in it. Uh, give this one a whirl. It's funny, this one doesn't seem to be as fruity as the Puy Vanzel. Uh, it feels almost weightier, but um, yeah, but it, it, it's almost like this really, not stubborn, but it feels like a, a wine that um, maybe there wasn't, there, there, there wasn't a huge amount of freshness of fruit in the first place, but there is this power and intensity. Is it just power and intensity? Let's have a see. And again, like the Puy Vanzel, it's getting fruitier than it was yesterday, um, and uh, with that extra little bit of weight. So difference between the two is, as I say, not much too, too much difference in price. Um, the Puy Vanzel is probably going to be ready sooner. Sooner, um, the Puy Fuise still feels like it's 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 coming out of its shell. As for uh, whether this is uh, a two, 2015 was too hot. I certainly don't notice heat of alcohol. Let's have a see whether the alcohol's on here. Thirteen percent. Um, I well, <laughs> the neck label is the one that's got the vintage on. I wouldn't be surprised if it's. Uh, you look at most vintages, and it's thirteen percent. Slap wrist, Simon. Um, but um, at thirteen and a half percent for for the Puy Vanzel. It's funny the uh, Puy Fuise tastes like a weightier wine. And um, uh, but yes, it feels like uh, yeah. Do the Puy Vanzel now or over the next year or so. Uh, Puy Fuise, it's got a little bit more oomph and a grunt built into it. Uh, neither of them long keepers, but um, I think they're both going to be pretty pretty satisfying over the next three or four years. See you soon.